The only thing that's a little tough with these guys is that you have to keep up with the food supply. Uh, even the bigger frogs, even the two and a half, three inchers, will only eat relatively small, live, soft-bodied food. Uh, yeah, a three-inch dart frog ought to be able to eat a half-grown cricket, and they will try, but what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a dart frog that's impacted because they just can't digest anything with the hard shell. Um, in our facility, we use, there's several different types of, uh, of, of flightless fruit flies and wingless fruit flies you can get. Uh, there's IDI, which are a larger fly. There's Melanogasters, which are a smaller fly. Uh, for the last 20 years, we've used Melanogaster because they're much easier, we find them much easier to culture than the Heidi IR. The other thing we, we feed a fair amount of to the large frogs is flower beetle larva. Uh, that's also a very good food, a little fatty, so it's not something you want to feed all the time, but it's a, a very good supplemental type food. Uh, couple things that have come up recently. Uh, I caution you a little bit in using the bean beetle cultures, uh, but I'd be a little careful. I certainly wouldn't use the bean beetles on my large frogs for a steady feeding. So, small, live, soft body food is important. We feed our babies either every day or every other day. And by babies, I mean frog that's up to about the sixth month size. Uh, the adults, we feed every third day. If you have ever kept tropical fish, if you've ever kept a goldfish alive for six or seven months, you can keep dart frogs alive. And again, I mentioned dart frogs are anywhere from the size of your thumbnail to over three inches. It takes about a year to 14 months to reach full size. And if you are lucky or unlucky enough to have a pair, they will begin to breeding anywhere from 14 months to, to 20 months. What do you do if you end up with, with, uh, with eggs in your terrarium? Well, but you'll get anywhere from a one or two or three eggs from a pair every week or 10 days to as many as 20 or 30 eggs on some of the, some of the types. So uh, you have to be a little bit ready to, uh, to take care of a bunch of little tadpoles. Now, uh, one of the unfortunate things with the tadpoles is most of them uh, tend to be a little bit cannibalistic when they're first hatched out. So what you need to do is what I, anyway, what we do in our facility is to put them in individual deli cups, raise them up to about three quarters of an inch long, and then they seem to lose that affinity toward eating their brothers and sisters. You can put them in a communal tank with a bunch of plastic plants or java moss or whatever to where they have a chance to hide, and you can raise 20 or 30 communally without any problems. Uh, if you have a whole bunch of tadpoles that you really don't want to take care of, what you do is you take, take them and put them in a, a sterile container about this size, only shorter. Don't put many plants in there. You might start with 15 on Monday. By the following Monday, you're going to end up with three or four really nice size tadpoles because they've been munching out on their brothers and sisters over the previous week. So. And again, for the tadpoles, I feed just good quality tropical fish flake food. There's another product out there called uh, T-Pole Bites, Tadpole Bites, because I switched over to that to a large part, and I found out that the tadpoles grow faster, uh, put on size quicker, and uh, generally seem to go for that food, and it tends to cloud the water very, very little. So it's a, it's a really good product. And I guess there's as, as many opinions upon about terrarium design as there are people out there trying to keep frogs. We've had people buy frogs from us that have kept them in critter keepers on wet paper toweling. The other side to that is that some folks have to take a 110 or 150 gallon tropical fish tank, maybe they had a reef tank that they got tired of the saltwater fish or trying to grow coral, so they, they turned that into a terrarium. So my bottom line is, is, is get what you want, set it up the way you want, there is no only one way to do it, which some people will try to tell you. Um, if you're going to keep frogs like the little thumbnail frogs that depend upon getting isopods and other things out of the out of the uh, 
to the substrate, then you need to go with things like the aliflor or, or the little little plastic uh, balls that you can get, uh, where you put layers in, where there the isopods and springtails will actually live in, in that type of an environment, propagate in that environment that's your, primarily your frog food. Uh, if you're gonna go with things like you see mostly that we have here today, some of the larger frogs, we found out that a terrarium with the sphagnum moss, it's worked very well for us for 20 years, never really had any problems. The nice thing about the about the sphagnum is is that it doesn't rot, mold, mildew, or smell. So you're not going to walk into your den or wherever you keep the frog and say, "Hey, that's where some some smells in here." You're not going to end up with a smelly a smelly animal or animals. In fact, you go to Walmart, you can buy plastic plants that look so near to being you know real plants that you actually have to touch them before you can tell that hey. This is plastic. As far as terrarium design, again, terrarium design is up to you. I can tell you that Zoomed and Exoterra make some wonderful terrariums now. You can buy them anywhere. I wouldn't go smaller than the 12 by 12. You can regulate the amount of, uh, of uh, ventilation into the terrarium. You can. Uh, you have some nice vertical heights where you can hang some plants from the back of the terrarium. Uh, use cork bark or. or uh, tree fur fiber, things like that. You can make a really good, really good design. In a well set up terrarium, uh, you should not have to clean but once every three or four years. Uh, something like this that doesn't have the multi-level layers, there you're gonna need to clean that out every nine to 12 months.